One thing that's really cool and interesting is that people still think a conventional loan, you need 20% down. Actually, you can get a conventional loan with as little as 3% down if you meet certain requirements. Are you ready and excited to talk about conventional loan requirements? Because I know it seems weird, but I actually am. Today's video is conventional loan requirements. And by the end of this video, you're going to have a better idea of what you'll need to qualify for a conventional loan. Welcome to your one-stop shop for anything and everything mortgage education. I drop new videos every Tuesday as well as every Saturday. My name is Stephanie Weeks. I have not only been doing this for 17 years, but I've been recognized in the Scotsman Guide for Top Originators as well as in Mortgage Executive Magazine. So hang in there with me today and we're gonna dive into the topic as promised. There are five things that I want to cover with you today with regard to the basic requirements for a conventional loan. Those five things that we're gonna dive into today are credit score requirements and does your credit matter, debt to income requirements, how important are your bank statements, do you need your own money or can you get help from a family member, and rental history, is it required? These are the five things today, let's dive in. Number one. Credit score requirements. As I've mentioned in other videos, the basic requirements are dictated by FHA and FHA's example, RD and RD's example. In today's example, it's conventional, so it's Fannie or Freddie. They dictate the minimum credit scores that they will allow. However, the lender that's actually lending the money and putting their self on the hook, basically, they also can change what they allow. So Fannie and Freddie might say, hey, we'll allow a 580 credit score, but if the lender wants a 620, you need a 620. Or if Fannie or Freddie says that you can have a 580 credit score, but you don't have 20% down and you need mortgage insurance and the mortgage insurance company won't finance you for mortgage insurance, then it's irrelevant again, right? So the credit score definitely matters. It varies lender to lender and actually can also vary based on down payment. If you're putting 20% down versus the minimum 3% down on a conventional loan, the credit score requirements can actually be different in those two examples. And I also wanna mention, does your credit matter? Yes, it does. Let's dive into that. I wanna go into those details because I feel like they're so important. They're so important because Credit definitely matters. Not only is it just a credit score, it's not, it's so much more than that. It is how long have you had a credit report or how long have you been in file? How long are your oldest trade lines? How much time do they have to review your history? How many accounts do you have? How many accounts do you have open? How many accounts do you have with balances? Are you paying on time? Have you ever paid late? If you did pay late, when, how recently, and how late? Are you keeping a really good control over your revolving accounts and not maxing out all of your revolving cards? That matters too. Do you have any charge-offs? Do you have any collections? All of those things go into the credit that dramatically matters on top of just meeting that credit score. So please monitor your credit. Please do your best job to pay everything on time. Please do your best job to not max out your credit cards. Avoid collections and charge-offs with everything that you possibly can so that you're off on the right foot when it comes to credit, not only score, but also overall credit as well. Now diving into number two, we're gonna talk about debt to income requirements. There's a housing ratio, which is your house payment in relation to your monthly income. There's a debt to income ratio, which is the house payment and your other minimum payments in relation to your monthly income. With your overall debt ratio, which is what I'm gonna to discuss today and not get much into the housing ratio, if you're below 41%, they love it. And they meaning Fannie and Freddie. They love when you're below 41%. They will, many instances, approve 45% debt to income ratio. Sometimes I've seen that go to 47 or 49% debt to income ratio under certain circumstances, but your credit history and that credit score is gonna really have a lot to do with dictating 
how high you can go on that debt to income. Because the lower your score and the more shaky your credit, they're gonna want you to have lower ratios than someone who has great history and a great score. Keep that in mind. It's another reason why credit is so very important. 45% or less debt to income is the general rule of thumb for conventional loans. Let's go to number three. How important are your bank statements? <sighs> I'm gonna take a deep breath on that one because they're so important. We need to verify, do you have enough money for closing? Do you have money left over after closing for a rainy day? Are you responsible with your money? Do you have overdraft? Do you have NSF? A bank statement is a crucial piece in your pre-approval process and your final approval process. Set yourself up for success and not for failure. Make sure that you're being very responsible when it comes to your bank statements. We're gonna look at average balance, ending balance, look at look and analyze every single deposit that goes into that account. Some might have to be sourced, some might have to be seasoned, some might be able to be ignored, but all of that along with if you're overdrafting or having NSFs, and we're also looking at that ending balance on the statement as well, all of that goes into the asset or bank statement part of your conventional loan approval. So again, very important. Yes, it matters. Speaking of matters, and speaking of assets, and speaking of bank statements, number four, do you have to have your own money or can a family member help you? One thing that's really cool and interesting is that people still think a conventional loan you need 20% down. Actually, you can get a conventional loan with as little as 3% down if you meet certain requirements. A lot of people go conventional with 5% down. I don't find that many people put 20% down. A lot of people just don't have that much cash. The money down plus the closing cost plus the prepaid items actually can be your own money or a gift from a family member or a combination of both. That is acceptable. So yes, you can get a gift from a family member and no, you might not need all of your own money to buy a home and finance conventional. But remember, it has to do with all the aspects of your file. It is very case by case, just like everything with lending, but you might be able to get in with no money and just having a family member help you. So that's pretty cool and pretty exciting. Let's dive into last but not least, number five, rental history. Is it required? Not usually, but sometimes it's very helpful to have, especially if we can verify it. If you pay it in cash and it's not traceable, it does not exist in our eyes and therefore we can't use it. But having rental history, it can be very helpful, especially if you have some weaknesses in your file. If I can show that, let's say that you have been paying rent of 1200 bucks a month on time perfectly for a year, maybe two years, and now your new payment's gonna be a thousand bucks a month, even though you might be weak in some of these other areas of the file, that can definitely help with your approval. And let's flip that for a minute. Let's just say that your file is weak overall in these different departments, okay? And you have been paying no rent, and now you're gonna go from paying nothing to paying a thousand bucks a month. That might make it harder to get you approved. So each and every one of these five pieces, and there's even more than this that goes into it, but definitely these five pieces are very important factors and parts in knowing and understanding conventional loan requirements. There's a lot more pieces and parts. You're probably learning if you're watching these videos that every loan is so different. It can be case by case. And in some instances, there's some wiggle room with things. I'm wishing you all the success that you can possibly have. I hope you get your conventional loan approved. And I hope that these five things have really helped with the rental income, the credit score, the debt to income, knowing about your bank statements and knowing about a family gift. My freebie for you today is going to be my conventional loan cheat sheet. I'm gonna drop that in the description below and I hope you enjoy. Drop me a comment below. I'd love to hear if you feel like you could win at the game of getting approved for a conventional loan. Type W-I-N in the comments. I love engaging with you all and I really appreciate the feedback. I 
hope that you have enjoyed today's video. And if you did, I hope if you haven't already subscribed to the channel that you will do so now. Don't forget to hit the bell to be notified. Don't forget to give me a like, big ol' thumbs up is appreciated. And feel free and it's encouraged to please share this information with your friends and family. I would love to connect with you all. I appreciate all of you. We can connect via social media. If you'd like to DM me, my Insta handle is underscore the real Stephanie Weeks.